Welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes. Today we're going to be looking at carboxylic acids. This is sometimes referred to as alkanoic acids. The general formula for a carboxylic acid is CnH2n plus 1 COOH. The functional group present here is the COOH and that is usually represented as this group. Now if you look at the general formula you will realize that you have a carbon maybe here and you also have a carbon present in the functional group as well. So therefore, the first member of this group has one carbon atom, and therefore the formula is HCOOH, which is represented by this formula here. In the case of ethanoic acid, we have two carbon atoms. <coughs> now remember, I just said that we have a carbon atom in the functional group. And another carbon atom so therefore if we have to use the formula we have to use n as 1 in this case so this will become CH3 COOH so you have one carbon atom here and one carbon atom here and this is ethanoic acid and this is a displayed formula for ethanoic acid the next member of the group is propanoic acid and we have three carbon atoms therefore n is 2 in this case so it will be C 2 H and the formula is 2 n plus 1 so it will be 2 2 is a 4 plus 1 which is 5 C O O H and the displayed formula for propanoic acid is this The next member is butanoic acid, which is which has four carbon atoms. So therefore, N is three in this case. So it'll be C three H three times two equals six plus one, which is seven COOH. And this is a displayed formula. You will notice that in all the members of the homologous series, we have the COOH group present. Now we need to know that ethanoic acid is a weak acid. And what do we mean when we say a weak acid? A weak acid is partially ionized in aqueous solution to form the ethanoic, uh, ethanoic ion. Now, an acid like hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, and in aqueous solution, it produces H plus ions plus Cl minus ions. And the presence of the H plus ions is what makes HCl acidic. Now, in the case of ethanoic acid, in an aqueous solution, you produce the ethanoate ion, which is this and you produce the H plus ion. This is what is responsible for the acidity. And if you will notice is that we have an equilibrium reaction here. What this means is that the reaction takes place in both directions. It goes to the right as well as to the left. Therefore in an aqueous solution you're going to have CH3, COH molecules present as well as the ethanoid ion, as well as the H plus ion. In the case of HCl, HCl completely ionizes. So all you will have is H plus and Cl minus. There will be no HCl. So you need to know that ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Now to look at the various reactions of ethanoic acid. An acid plus a metal produces a salt and hydrogen gas. 
So therefore, ethanoic acid will react the same way. In this case, we have ethanoic acid reacted with magnesium. So what we get is, is a salt, which is magnesium ethanoate. So this is the salt. And we produce hydrogen gas. Now we look at the reaction of ethanoic acid with oxides and metal oxides. And what will be produced is a salt and water. So in this example, we have ethanoic acid reacting with copper to oxide. And the products are copper to ethanoate, which is this salt. And we have water being produced. So the metal oxide plus the ethanoic acid produces a salt and water. This next reaction, we look at the reaction between ethanoic acid and sodium carbonate. In this case, again, we produce a salt, which is sodium ethanoate. We get water and we get carbon dioxide. So whenever an acid reacts with a carbonate or hydrogen carbonate, you produce a salt, water and carbon dioxide. The next reaction we are looking at is an esterification reaction. When a mixture of ethanol and ethanoic acid is heated under reflux in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, we get an ester being produced. And the name of the ester is ethyl ethanoate. Now, you can be asked to draw or write an equation showing what is happening. In this case, we have ethanoic acid, which is represented by this. And we know that ethanoic acid is CH3COOH plus ethanol. This is the ethanol here. And the ethanol is C to H five OH and the reaction is reversible. So therefore that is why we heat under reflux. And what is produced is the ester which is CH three C O O C two H five plus water. So what we notice is that the OH from the acid and the H from the alcohol comes out as water. So therefore, this reaction is called a condensation reaction because water is being produced in this reaction. And you need to know that it is also an esterification reaction. Now, esters ethyl ethanoate is an ester and it's usually sweet smelling and it's usually responsible for the sweet smell of certain fruits now if you would notice how we name the ester the first part or the first part of the name comes from the alcohol and the second part comes from the acid. So this is from the acid part and this is from the alcohol part. So if we had ethanoic acid reacting with, let's say, propanol. What we will get is propyl ethanoate. 
again the first part of the name comes from the alcohol and the second part comes from the acid Now we need to know how to perform the reverse reaction where we start off with an acid. In this case, we can hydrolyze an ester and it's a reverse process of esterification. When the ester is hydrolyzed, the ester linkage is broken. Now, if we go back here, we notice that in the ester we have this group here, which is called the ester linkage. So in this example, we have ethyl ethanoid reacting with an AKS acid, for example, dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hydrochloric acid. And what happens is that we produce ethanoic acid and ethanol. So we start off by having the ester. And what happens is that we have this bond being broken and what we end up with is ethanoic acid and ethanol. So just remember that the hydrolysis is a reverse process. Now the reaction is slightly different when we react with aqueous alkali, for example sodium hydroxide. In this case we have the, et the ethyl ethanoid reacting with the sodium hydroxide and we initially produce ethanoic acid and ethanol but if we have excess sodium hydroxide it reacts with the acid to produce sodium ethanoid and water so what you end up with is, is salt so therefore the overall reaction when we react with sodium hydroxide is represented by this reaction here which is ethyl ethanoate plus sodium hydroxide produces sodium ethanoate and ethanol. So we get a salt in this case and not ethanoic acid. The process of soup making is called saponification. Animal fats and plant oils have the ester linkage present in them. Now soaps are sodium or potassium salts of long chain carboxylic acids. In order to prepare a sample of soup, you heat a fat or oil with concentrated sodium hydroxide. Following that, concentrated sodium chloride is added to salt out the soup. A byproduct of soap making is glycerol. Let us look at it as a, at an example. Suppose we have this molecule here, which represents a fat. Now we said that the fat is initially 
me to react with sodium hydroxide. What happens is that we end up with R C double bond O O N E. Another one. Plus, now, what is happening is here is we have one, two, three. So that's where we got these three from. One, two, three. And now we have to treat with this piece here. And the product in this case is glycerol, which is represented by. So this is glycerol. And what these represent, these are sodium salts of a long chain carboxylic acid. So this would represent a soup. 